Welcome back to the Cobra 29 LX EU, which is one of the latest models, multicolour front and all kinds of gimmicks. Certainly lights up like a Christmas tree. Well, this we're now on the receive side and of course this is a new set so it is working. Not having a manual it's all guesswork. And so here goes, here goes with some guessing. I've got a cyanide meter in front of me and I've got an oscilloscope. I'm going to make sure the RF gains at full if it's got one. It has and it is at full. Let's do 0 0.3 of a microvolt. But not much below 0 0.15, which is good performance, but not as good as a 30-year-old Amstrad 901. Let's see if we can just beat that. We're on channel 20 on the UK channels, because I'm only interested in the UK channels. If you wanted it to work on better on the EU channels, then you'd, you'd do that on channel 20, the EU channels. If you want it to work equally well on uh, EU channels and the UK channels, then you'd just need it on channel 1 of UK or channel 40 of EU. But we're in it in UK channels, so it's channel 20 in the centre of the UK band. So that's 27 decimal 79125. So we'll make the first adjustment. And presumably it's the one which I can't find a label of. Being very careful with this. New set. It is our property just in case you think we're experimenting on a customer's. Now I'll gain some on L2 and I'll back the attenuator down slightly. L22. L21. L4. Now, which one's going to be the AM detector and which one's going to be the FM detector? And I'm going to plump for this one and not touch that one. So I'm going to go for an S9 signal. And we're looking for maximum audio. I'll use the yellow tool. Yeah, I'm right, it is. I can't tell you which coil number it is, it's the one next to the left of the filter. Okay, I've been through all those adjustments again through those coils. And I don't know whether you can hear, there is just the tone there. I'm just going to turn it off. That's the tone off. And that's the tone on. It'll come on and then die down to the level set. And off again. You can just hear, and that's the edge of my clock, that's 0 0.06 of a microvolt, which brings us in line to what the old Amstrads did. So yes, that's nice and sensitive. Now I've optimised it. The manufacturer says it's less than one microvolt. Well, we've got it down to 0 0.06, not that that's for the 10 decibel cyanide. Um, but that's 0 0.15, 0 0.2, 0 0.25, 0 0.3. That is... 1, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5. So, yeah, not bad. Right, uh, that brings us to the S9 for the S meter. The S meter is adjusted is that one there which is RV6 RV6 I use a yellow tool to point it out I'll just see what we're saying because it should be S9 on the meter it's actually S7 so it does need a little adjustment
There we are, just toggling on the 9. You can plug an external S meter in for those people who don't like the digital meters. It's a standard 2.5mm jack socket on the back of the radio. Now we need to set the squelch. We'll turn the signal generator off. We'll set the squelch to, if we can find it, to threshold. It's concentric with the volume control. You've got on off volume and then the squelch is the outer ring. So we've turned the signal generator off. I'm going to now switch the generator back on. Now we're at squelch threshold. And it comes in where? Well, it comes in at one microvolt. That's fine. Now I'm going to turn the squelch to full and see where that comes in with the signal generator. Increasing the attenuator comes in at one volt, and that's fine. What you don't want is a radio where you turn the squelch to full and no signal, however strong, will ever open it. And the squelch preset is there, it's RV5. And that's actually all there is to it, so it does actually work uh, quite nicely. So that sets up a treat, and later on this evening, we'll put it on the air and see if there's somebody to talk to. Thanks for watching.